Episode 194, Filtering the Impurities. Blair couldn't understand the language and was still baffled. She looked at those big stone buckets and couldn't dare to believe that they were all filled with salt. As Rex ran, he raised his front legs and turned into his human form. Before he could say anything, a piece of animal skin was thrown at his face. It's your animal skin skirt. No need to thank me. Roger was also attracted by the tiger roars. The moment he put his head out from the tree hole, he saw Rex about to transform. Before he jumped down from the tree, he tossed down an animal skin skirt. Rex's abnormally majestic gym bod had always been a thorn in his heart. He couldn't let Blair's heart be stolen by Rex. Rex immediately put it on. He now had a mate and couldn't expose himself in front of other females. Rex felt especially good from this secret thought, even though Blair might not be concerned about him. It's salt! Blair couldn't understand, but Stephanie, who was of the pure-blooded tiger tribe lineage, could. She said this in a hurry and then also ran over to take a look. Blair raised her head and looked toward Rex. He said, Yes, it's salt. We've managed to extract salt with both methods you mentioned. My God! Blair found this very amazing and immediately got excited. I'll go take a look as well. The salt barrel was surrounded by layers of tiger beast men, so how could Blair, someone with almost no battle prowess, be able to squeeze her way in? However, she had just run over when they immediately made way for her. Blair was feeling perplexed when she turned and realized that Rex had come along. She suddenly felt a hidden exhilaration of taking the advantage of someone else's influence to throw one's weight around. The females brought animal skin skirts for their males, and the tribal had also received one from his female. When he saw that Blair, someone not from the tribe, had come, he turned into his human form and put on his animal skin skirt. If you guys have taken a look, then you can leave. Go back and bring the vessels here. We'll be distributing the salt right away. The tribal had especially looked toward Blair as he said this, wearing a sincere smile. You can go back home and wait. I want to take a look. It was my idea. Blair smiled. However, the stone bucket was taller than she was. She could only jump as she tried to take a look. Suddenly, she felt tension on her waist and her vision became higher. Blair looked down and saw a pair of big hands around her waist. She didn't need to look back to know that it was Rex. Thanks. After thanking softly, Blair grabbed onto the stone bucket's edges and looked inside. The salt inside was a little glaring even to Blair, and her lips curled up uncontrollably. There's so much... The scent of blood suddenly permeated in the air. Everyone was immersed in the elation, so they only reacted after seeing the source of the blood stench. Caspian was lugging a wild wolf. He looked into the stone bucket and was also momentarily astonished. Their tribe would only be able to extract this much salt in a year. This was bad. If the beastmen on land became better than merfolk at extracting salt, then how would salt trade work? However, his tone sounded a little contemptuous when he spoke. It's a vast difference from the salt we extract. There's still sand inside. These small flaws made Caspian feel a little better. However, Blair's next sentence broke his line of balance. Oh, that's nothing. The sand can be sieved out. Blair smiled. The tribal had also said, What's the problem with a little sand? We can just pick them out when we have time. Roar! The tiger beast men all cried out in agreement. Caspian felt completely dejected and walked away while dragging his prey. Only now did Blair notice his prey. You actually managed to hunt something on land? That's so amazing. Wolves run really fast. This wolf wanted me as a meal, so he came to me. Caspian let out a bitter laugh and said with a sigh, 
The merfolk have come up to land to hunt for food, and the beastmen on land can enter the sea to extract salt as well. There no longer seems to be any difference between the beastmen on land from the ones in the water anymore. Blair nudged him with her shoulder and said, This is a necessary process in evolution. Everyone is developing and advancing. Don't be unhappy. Mm. Caspian took his prey and returned to the waterhole. Some beastmen had come with their salt containers. Blair quickly said to Rex, Don't distribute it now. Let's clean it first. It'll be easy to get sick if we eat the salt with impurities inside. Rex hadn't been concerned at the beginning, but when he heard the last part, he decisively got the tribal head to stop the distribution. The tiger beast men felt like a cat was scratching at their hearts as they crowded around the salt bucket, unwilling to leave. Rex asked, How do we sieve it? Wait a minute. I'll make a trip back. After saying that, Blair tugged at Roger and said, Quickly take me back to the tree hole. Stephen was curled up and resting on the second floor, seemingly as if he hadn't been disturbed by the noise in the village. Blair gently flipped through the clothes chest, but was unable to find a single piece of snakeskin clothing, even after rummaging through it. Hmm, where did they go? Blair took out all the clothes and searched for the clothing one by one. However, she still couldn't find anything. Where could they be? Blair scratched her head anxiously. Stephen's snakeskin was good. Although it looked as if there were no pores, the ventilation was very good. It was excellent material for filtering and would definitely be able to keep the sand away. Salt would dissolve in water, so after the filtering, it should be clean. Roger sniffed and then turned towards Stephen, who was coiled up like a lollipop. Blair followed his gaze and noticed him as well. She quickly walked over and asked, Stephen, did you see your snake skin? He hid his snake head near his stomach. Hey, Stephen. Blair was baffled. Was he in a bad mood or was he going to shed his skin? Roger then sniffed, lowered his head, and kept on whiffing at the dried grass pile. They are inside, Roger said with certainty. Blair was stunned, then punched Stephen. So you hid them. Stephen looked up helplessly at her. Quickly give me the snake skin. I'll bring it back very soon, Blair said. Stephen refused to budge no matter what she said. Roger thought of an idea and scratched his head. Hmm. I'll go down and dig a hole through the floor. <sniffs> Stephen glared coldly at him, swinging his snake tail as if saying, If you dare move, I'll send you flying. Blair drew out handfuls of grass under Stephen's body and pleaded, Good husband, please be benevolent and move your body. Stephen's eyes darted toward her, moving his upper body and turning into a half-man, half-snake form. Blair was elated and said, You agreed? What is good husband? Stephen instinctively felt that the meaning of these words would make his mood better, and thus decided to speak up. Blair blushed. She was really giving up on her integrity to plead for the snakeskin, saying things without thinking. Good husband means good mate. The females from where I come from refer to their males as husband, Blair said with a reddened face. This meant that he was a good mate? Stephen's blood-red snake pupils presented an elation that was contrary to ordinary snake beast men. The females' recognition toward their mates might be very normal to other males, but to a snake beast man it was definitely a great blessing. At the very least, from Stephen's legacy teachings, no male from his lineage had been fortunate enough to hear this. Stephen took out a piece of snakeskin that had been folded into a neat square from the grass pile. Blair's eyes lit up, and she clearly said, Give me! Give me! Stephen first spread out the dress, but it was taken away just as Blair reached out for it. 
In its place, a piece of tube top the size of a rag appeared. Blair's face stiffened. Just this little bit? You can't wear this anymore anyway. You can use it, Stephen said, sounding very generous. Blair sighed. How long would it take to filter everything with this bit of snakeskin? It wouldn't be able to hold much water. Moreover, this is something I wear on my chest. Wouldn't it feel strange when eating the salt that has been filtered through it? Stevens and Roger's faces immediately changed. Both of them had caught the sweet, milky scent from the tube top. At the thought of how this scent would be smelled by other males, their expressions turned extremely bad. Stephen eventually took out the dress, his expression so cold that even Blair shuddered. She took it and descended the tree hole. It needs to be mixed with water again? Asked Rex as he looked at her. It hadn't been easy for them to get this salt, and he couldn't bear to spoil it. The group of beastmen who had seen how seawater had been dried up into salt was still fine, but those who didn't know became extremely angry and irritable. No, we can't mix it with water. How are we going to eat it after it dissolves? Even if it still can be eaten after turning into water, it won't be easy to store. That's right. This is already very good. Those were the voices from the beastmen who hadn't gone to dry the salt. Even those who went felt unsure. What if they couldn't dry the salt after lake water had been mixed in? Blair grabbed a handful of salt and saw quite a few impure particles with just a rough look. She said to Rex, Trust me, females might not be able to take it after eating these things. Why don't we try filtering half a bucket first? Rex only asked casually. He remained in absolute approval of Blair's idea and immediately said, All right. As there weren't enough pots, Rex could only filter half a barrel first. He dug out half of the salt from the salt barrel, then added warm water inside. The salt was quickly dissolved. The salt water produced after dissolving the salt looked no different from clear water. Blair added more salt. With a higher concentration, it'd be easier to dry again after the filtering. After washing Stephen's snakeskin... Animal skin rope was used to tie up the collar and sleeves tightly. The loose dress hem was laid out on the edges of an empty stone bucket. The salt water was poured in, and the rate at which water passed through the snakeskin was so fast that it was almost impossible to see by the naked eye. However, they could hear the sound of water dripping into the stone bucket. After the water poured into the snakeskin had settled down, a layer of sand and fine impurities like mulch was left on the snakeskin. It hadn't been so clear that there were so many impurities when the salt was in a solid state, but after the filtering, everything was very clear. The beast men who had objected calmed down after seeing the impurities in the water. They stopped annoying the Tiger King. Blair stared at the water with great focus. She felt a strong sense of achievement after seeing that those things had been filtered out. I didn't expect there to be so many impurities. It seems that there really is a need to filter it. It should be fine after one round of filtering, Blair nodded. In the time they waited for the salt water to be filtered, Rex sent Tiger Beastmen to pick a few large rocks to make a few small-scale salt evaporation ponds. The salt evaporation ponds were about half a meter tall and only about the size of a tree hole. After a bucket of salt water had been filtered, they were poured into the salt evaporation ponds and then brought to the white ginger field, where there was direct sun exposure, to dry.